When dealing with parallelograms, we have five properties that we have to work with. The first one is that opposite sides are parallel, which is really kind of the definition of it being a parallelogram. The way we can look at on here of opposite sides being parallel is look at the actual slope of those sides. So picture if this was on a graph, and I have looking at the slope of those lines. Now as I move them around, notice how those slopes of the opposite sides, so I have M and M1, and then M2 and M3 remain the same no matter where I move it. So this is locked in and guaranteed to remain a parallelogram. Now what's good about that is now that that is met, I know that all the other properties will work because it is in fact a parallelogram. So opposite sides are congruent. We can look at the length of the sides. And this is just in units from our graph. And as I move this around, notice how those opposite sides, no matter how big or how small, always remain the same. Next, we go to opposite angles congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. For this, we're going to look at the angle measurements going all around. So I need three points to make an angle. So I go three at a time. Make sure the middle letter is your vertex. And now I said opposite angles are congruent. So I have 119.95 from B and D. I have 60.5.05 at A and C. And no matter where I move that, the opposites will always remain the same, whether it be a rectangle, whether it be a rhombus, no matter what I do with it, they always remain the same. Now we also have there that consecutive angles are supplementary. That means the angles that are next to each other. So if I look at A and B, those two are next to each other. 74.86 and 105.14 add up to 180. B and C, 105.14, 74.86 add up to 180. Same works for C and D and A and D. No matter how I go around, any two that are next to each other will be supplementary. So if they're opposite, not next to each other, they're the same. If they are next to each other, then they are supplementary. This will work at any pair that I work with. Now the last thing we have is that diagonals bisect each other. So I'm going to draw the diagonals A to C, B to D. Now these happen to meet at a point right here E. What we're not saying here is that the diagonals are congruent, because if I move this, I can see that BD and AC are certainly not the same. What's happening here is that a given diagonal is cut into smaller pieces. So what I'm going to do is measure the length from B to E, and then from E to D. Measure from A to E, and E to C. Now those pieces are now the same. In my, uh, in my diagram. B to E, E to D are bisected, they're equal to each other. E to C, A to E are equal, that diagonal is bisected. If I wanted the entire diagonal, I could add them together or just double one of them. So those are our five properties we have to know for a parallelogram. You're going to use those to sub solve, solve, find various sides, find various angles, our favorite solve for x type problems, but it's knowing those properties and using them correctly, which is the important part.